What is up everybody, Dak here. I'm back. Uh, being, I've had a quick break. Well, I wasn't not working, but I was waiting to get some stuff. Uh, here's a blade that I've got. And here is a router bit that I've got. Uh, this one is a 3mm wide uh, straight cut bit. And this is a 2.6mm wide, I believe. 2.4 slash 2.3mm wide uh, blade for the Midas saw. And this is advertised as being for kerfing. It's got thin kerf written on it there. Alright, so I've got this as a new blade. It's quite a bit thinner than the original blade I had. And I've also got this router bit where I'm going to set up a fence and cut with the router going along it to get a straight cut right through. I'm going to be comparing the thickness of the cuts between uh, this blade here and the router bit here. Uh, they should end up being about the same, I'd imagine, because this blade should, or probably won't be perfect, and it'll probably have a bit more wobble in it, making the gap a bit wider than uh, this will have going in the router. So I've got this test sheet here, and I'm just going to go ahead and do two lines on it, one with the router, one with the circular saw, and see which one is thinner. Alright, so I've got the bit in and the blade in, now I'm just going to cut two lines across here. Alright, I've finished doing the kerf cuts. Uh, these were done with the router, these were done with the circular saw. Uh, as you can see, the router only goes about halfway through, whereas the circular saw goes through, and I set it to leave about one layer left, so I should be able to bend it quite easily. The router here, since it didn't go that far through, and I did have it set to its maximum depth, it's not it's not got a lot of flex, you know, I'd still need to put a lot of weight on it to be able to curve it, so that's not ideal. Also, I noticed a few spots here where this top sheet uh, was delaminating, for example, right here, you can see that, yeah, see, it just fell off. There was, a, there was a huge gap in the plywood right there. Ah, a void. So um, that could be an issue, although I did, that it especially be an issue if I was doing it on, if this was the layer which was supposed to stick together, I could have had a problem. But once I'm doing it on a wide enough bit, uh, small gaps like this shouldn't be a problem. So I think I'm going to go right ahead and get the big sheet of wood and cut these slots in it. Alright, I'm about to do the cuts, uh, because the curve gradually gets more and more. I'm going to do one at 20, uh, the gaps are going to be 20, 15, 15, 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, 5. Alright, I've now done all the curves. Now, all I've got to do is put it on the template just over there. Uh, weigh it down, plus, uh, probably using those two bags just there and fill it with some glue that I have lying on the ground right there. Uh, the glue I'm going to be using, by the way, is uh, Sika Tech Grip. Uh, this glue I've found to be really strong. I think I mentioned it before. It's so strong, uh, it stays on my hands for usually about a week after I use it. Even if I barely touch it, I usually just give up and start spreading it around manually. But, well, it's good glue and it should keep this all nice and together. Alright, I've now got the sandbags on top and as you can see that is currently a curving sheet of wood. Uh, if I drop down underneath here you can see that it roughly follows, apologies of having to use manual focus, it roughly follows uh, the curve of the sheet of wood underneath. Uh, there is a, a gap there and I'll see if I can Lay that down a bit more, uh, but I might need to uh, tilt it up a bit more. Right now I'm using those bits of wood down there in order to hopefully spread the weight more evenly. But I might need to tip it up so more of this weight here is perpendicular to the sheet of wood to get it to bend properly. So right now um, I think the plan will be uh, take those bags off, lift it up a tad more, uh, put them back on after I add some glue to the gaps. I've now got the wood glued 
as you can see in between. I've also got some glue on my hands, unfortunately, so that's going to be fun. Uh, these two bags are to weight down, uh, so it hopefully follows the contour and see the clamp right there. It's not really needed, but it is providing a small clamp to hopefully get the second last one to conform. So fingers crossed uh, this holds together. When I take the sandbags off it, if it springs out, then uh, one or two things has happened. The one, I've not added enough glue to it, in which case I can just add some more. Hopefully nothing splits. Or two, um, the glue's not strong enough, in which case I'll have to work out an alternative. Even though that glue is very strong, it uh, bubbles up as it dries, uh, which makes it weaker across distances. It's really good at gluing two things together point blank, but when there's a gap like this, it might not work. Next day, I'm back. As you can see, it's finished gluing, and it now holds the profile of the curve. Uh, you can see right here, though, I've got a bit of paper uh, lying around, and especially over here, and there's some concrete stuff right there. A uh, bit of a disclaimer, don't use concrete bags as weights if they're going to get glue on them. I tried to avoid gluing here. I didn't think it was super necessary for full coverage, so I didn't put any or much glue under where the concrete bags were going, but uh, this is for the most part a success when I put weight on it. There is a small gap, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but I knew doing this would never get it perfectly to the profile. I should have cut it a bit further uh, down so it would be exaggerated and then shrink back to what it should be. But I'll do some bracing in the box and at least it doesn't take much force to get it to the correct curve. Right, so the next thing I've got to do is exactly the same as I did for this one. I will be using these concrete bags again for the new sheet, they're just too convenient. Uh, but I'll put down a bit of newspaper under them so I should be able to lift them straight off. Alright, I've now marked where I'm going to cut, and same thing as that one, just time to cut out all the slots. Kef cuts, now it's just time to put some glue in it, and lie it on that, and put some weight on it. The second curve finished gluing, and it mostly retained its curve, although not quite as well as the first one I did. Uh, I then sanded off the tips of both of them, where they meet at the front of the box, as you can see uh, right there. So now they meet quite well all the way across the top. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these sheets together and then I'm going to put them in the box and depending on how wide they are at the bottom I might have to adjust it but it'd be good if they were under a bit of tension in the box as it might give it a bit more strength. So I'll set these both up to glue now. I think this will conclude uh, today's episode. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed and be back for more.